Napoli's striker, Victor Osserman, is a huge talent who's proved himself this season with 26 goals in all competitions, as he's helped Napoli win their first Serie A title since 1990. And his tenacious talent is drawing attention from a number of Europe's big clubs. Big clubs including Manchester United. Eric Ten Hag is seen to be a big fan. And why wouldn't you be if you can get a striker who can average one goal or assist per game? So we're looking at what makes Victor Osserman so good. And what can you add into your game learning from the Nigerian superstar? Now Osserman is a striker. He plays up front and he's the focal point of the Napoli team. He's a player who's equally comfortable doing a number of different roles. He can play on the shoulder of the last defender, looking to run in behind and get through on those through balls using his great pace. Or alternatively, he's able to drop short, dropping short to receive the ball from midfielders and defenders while under pressure, keeping the possession for the Napoli team. But whatever he decides to do, he's always the focal point of that Napoli team. He's able to be the highest player up the pitch and he's able to get on the ball. And it gives Napoli that target to play to, whether that be in behind the defence, stretching out the opposition's defence, or whether that be short. But these runs in behind the defence give him the opportunity to get into the penalty area of the opposition's team, where he can be in the top 3% of players who take touches in their box. And this allows Napoli to play the ball forwards nice and quickly. And modern centre forwards like Haaland and Osserman usually play up front on their own. Which is no easy task at all. Usually these players have to compete against one or even two centre backs. And this really is a physical challenge. And being the focal point of the team, players like Osserman need to be ready for this. But there is pressure, there's defensive pressure and there's aggressive play against him on the ball. But he can play away from this pressure, making runs in behind the defence. And this is a really key aspect of Osserman's game. He doesn't always just drop short, he likes to run in behind the defence and also make runs into the channels. And these runs into the channels, the wide areas of the attacking third of the pitch, can make the defence face their own goal, something that they definitely don't want to be doing. These runs in behind create a huge threat to goal, but it's also able to give Osman the chance to potentially drop short at times where he can keep possession and link play. And when Osman does drop short, he can compete. He's in the lowest 15% of players that lose the ball in these defensive duels. So when he is under pressure, he can keep the ball. And a large part of that is down to his body positioning. He looks to get his body in between the defender and the ball, protecting it from them. And when the defender does come tight and step up on him, he has the technical ability to roll and turn that defender. And once he's done that, he can then look to quickly play into his attacker's feet, linking play with them so he can get further opportunities to go forwards. But if he does drop short too often, this can bring pressure and it can allow the defence to squeeze up the pitch. So Osman has more strings to his bow. A one-dimensional player that always wants the ball to his feet, looking for the easy options. He's prepared to put the hard work in off the ball, progressing forwards by running in behind the defence. These runs can sometimes be very demo demotivating for an attacker. They may not get the ball, but Osserman keeps making these runs. And one of the key ones, as we touched on earlier, is that forward run into the channel. His pace running into these channel areas allows him to get forwards nice and quickly. Now, he might be wider from the goal, but from these areas, he can be a real danger. These runs to these channels will pull the centre back out, wider away from the centre areas of the pitch. And in these areas, Osserman can isolate that centre back. And isolating the centre back is something that he really wants to do. Getting slightly wider, closer to the touchline, pulls the centre back away from the safety of the centre area of their pitch. Defenders prefer attackers that are facing away from goal, but Osserman, with his pace, can run into the channel and pull the centre back wide so that he gets the ball and faces them, facing them to go one on one in the final third of the pitch. Isolating these defenders can give Osserman options. He can play one twos to get in and around the penalty area and drive into it, or he can potentially even take that defender on 1v1 
dribbling from wide areas to carry the ball into the penalty area. And once he's in the penalty area, Osserman is a player that is prepared to take a risk. He is prepared to go out there and shoot, showing great confidence in his abilities. And of all the strikers in Europe's top five leagues, he is in the top 1% for shots taken. He looks to get into the penalty area and he looks to pull the trigger. He's ready to shoot and he's ready to take that risk. But it's not just on the floor where he can be successful. He's also excellent in aerial duels. So when the ball gets out wide, Osserman looks to make runs into the box and use his heading ability to try and score more goals. You see that Osserman is an incredibly versatile attacker. Top strikers have many roles to play in the modern game. And a modern striker with pace, who can link play, hold up the ball and run in behind the defence is incredibly desirable. Add the goal scoring prowess and his finishing ability and you have someone who may be worth big money. But is Osserman worth £100 million? Will we see him leaving Napoli in the summer?